Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTKB Foundation Level Certification. We are in Chapter 6 talking about test tools and continuing ahead with our next segment that is 6.2 Benefits and Risk of Test Automation. And as a part of this tutorial, we'll be trying to understand is it so simple or difficult to make use of a tool. Looking at the trend, most of the people quite often think that using tools must be simpler, easier and adaptable at any point of time. And that's where it becomes a very complicated thing to blindly go for a tool. And this particular segment is going to help you understand that what are the purposes and benefits of having tool being used into your organization and process. And at the same time, we'll be also looking at what are the complicated risk involved, which one should look forward to mitigate well ahead of time before adopting a tool within the process and project because it could turn out to be a risk and could turn into a disaster in your project. So let's not waste our time and quickly look at some of the benefits quickly and then we'll talk about the risk also involved in using a tool. So benefits are very straightforward and uh, we talk about the benefits as simply acquiring a tool does not guarantee success. Each new tool will require effort to achieve real and lasting benefits, for example, for tool introduction, maintenance, and training. There are also certain risks which we will be looking into, and someone should look forward to mitigate that. Now, potential benefits of using test tools are very well understood. Number one, the time saved by reducing repetitive manual work. And that's one of the very common benefits of having an automation testing tool or any tool. So generally here we are talking about the blend of using tools and automation testing tools. Thus your benefits and risk will be from both the sides. So number one point is related to repetitive manual work is relating to the automation test tool. So of course we understand that if there are tests which we have to repeat again and again, it will certainly be very hectic to do manually. For example, if you talk about the regression testing, is something which is very good candidate of reputation and thus consumes a lot of time because over a period of time it is expected to grow bigger in size. Thus, it's a very good candidate of automation as well and that turns out to be one of the key benefit of having automation testing being in use. Also another benefit we have here is prevention of simple human errors through greater consistency and repeatability. Now this is more of like related to test management tools or any other automation tools as well. For example, if I'm talking about automation testing tools, we follow certain syntax for the languages which prevents human error, right? Because in manual testing, we say that different users can perform it differently, but when there are scripts written, it always maintains a consistency. Thus, it prevents human errors while writing it in terms of syntax. And even when it comes to systematic arrangement of data into a test management tool, it's more of like the tool will only drive the things according to the need of the tool. That is the fields to be filled up. There's a drop down value to be picked up. So instead of people mentioning things in Excel sheet, thus tool gives you another benefit by just having things being managed systematically or being consistent in their executions or maintenance. Further to add here, another benefit is more objective assessment and in providing measures uh, that are too complicated for human to drive. Now, for example, if you remember in chapter four, we covered some of the coverage measurements like statement coverage and decision coverage. When we had a simple program, we could do it easily with the flow chart. But when it is complex, what if it is a very big program, then certainly it's not something which is easy for a human mind to do it manually. In that context, we do have tools which are very capable of doing such evaluations and helping you get the required coverage within no time. And simply, when we talk about the linkage like traceability or traceability matrices, you may not have enough time to map 100 requirements with respect to that of 400 test cases one by one. And that's where a test management tool could have this capability of doing systematic measurements or more uh, specific assessments which are sometimes very complicated without having the tool. Plus to add here of course easier access to information about testing to support test management and test reporting. Of course uh, having test management tool will help you get everything what you need at any point of time being managing all your resources in a very systematic manner and at the same time can compile things together to build a wonderful report which can reflect coverages and executions and many other things related to different uh, parameters like defects, risk, etc. So test management tools again adds this benefit. 
Finally, we also talking about reduced test executions time to provide earlier defect detection, faster feedback, and faster time to market. Having said that, being automation testing tool user, you do understand yourself that it is very simple and faster if you have automation tools and practices because most of your manual efforts can be reduced and it turns into a big and fast change into your project, thus releasing tools well ahead of time. Also to add here, more time for testers to design new, deeper and more effective tests. And compiling all the benefits together, we would say that if altogether these benefits are achieved by your tools, then certainly the testers have enough time and more time given to them to think about the various scenarios or adding additional test cases rather than wasting their time doing executions manually. So put together, there are several benefits of having tool being used into the organization that turns out to be a great benefit for any organizations, but they are not just limited to benefits before we mitigate all the risk. So let's talk about the risk. On the other hand, if I talk about the risk, these are those risks which one should understand, identify well ahead of getting or procuring a tool for the organization or even for a project. In those terms, all we are trying to say that if these risks are identified and mitigated well in advance, your experience of interacting with the tools within the organization and the project would be less risky or no risk at all. But sometimes there are risks which you understood in our chapter five that they may not be mitigated, but have to be accepted. So let's quickly check out what are the risks we are talking about related to the test tools, which includes test management tools and test automation tools as well. So number one here, the potential risk of using test automation may include unrealistic expectation about the benefits of tool. Sometimes you thought that is as simple as downloading it from Google, installing it and getting started with it. But as you do talk about some of the complicated tools, they may not be easy to use and thus they may need a proper training, proper time given for people to learn about a programming language, or maybe sometime it could be hectically involved in configuration on the servers or setting it up together to in order to start using it. So it's not necessary that uh, every single tool is very user friendly. Sometime you need to really know in and out about the technologies before making use of a tool. Also to add, uh, Inaccurate estimations of time, cost, effort required to introduce a tool, maintain test scripts, and change the existing manual test process. See, all the three aspects have been discussed. When we talk about the cost, time, and effort required to roll out a new tool, one should really understand. However, let me remind you, these are the responsibility of the test manager, that is to select a tool and roll out a tool into the organization, so the team will not be involved. But manager, given that they have wide experience of such tools, they would be already taking care of that. But the cost, time and effort required should be calculated because you cannot expect your team to be well groomed with any type of tool blindly. So you must give them enough time, cost involved in buying the tool or doing the training, mentorship, etc. You cannot expect a return on investment right from the day one of getting a tool, right? And effort, the team has to apply those effort. They have to get used to it. They have to get you know, practicing with it, and that's where they start returning the benefit. So never underestimate the things related to cost, time, and effort uh, with respect to rolling out a tool for the first time, or if you are already having manual test cases and you want to migrate to automation, the efforts are different. So all these can be taken into a risk. The next one here is using a test tool when manual testing is more appropriate. It's, it's not a fashion to use a test tool. It's just that it's a need. So if you think your organization is really wasting a lot of time doing it manually and there is a solution, you have a budget, you have enough approvals for that, then you can certainly go for it, okay? It's just more about the need. It's not that if your manual is doing better than automation, then you still adopt an automation tool unnecessarily spending a cost. So it's very important to take all this point into account. Also to add here, uh, relying on a tool too much, that is over-reliance, so over-reliance simply means that you bought a washing machine, automated washing machine, and you thought that when you leave for work, the machine will roam around your house and pick up the dirty clothes and start washing them. Not That doesn't happen, right? So it's more of like letting you know that a tool will only do what you instruct it to. In fact, there will be still some manual efforts required, writing the scripts, giving the data, defining the control flow, and then even clicking the play button, which is to run the script, right? So exactly the same thing, no over-reliance on the tool. Tools will only do what you ask them to do and they still need the prerequisites. Okay, 
The next one here is the dependency on the tool vendor, which may go out of business, retire the tool, sell the tool to a different vendor, or provide poor support. Most of the time, it's not necessary that the tool only creates the problem in your project. Sometime, the tool provider could also be a problem. Sometimes becoming a very big brand and buying the tools from these big brands could be a challenge because they do not take care of the feedbacks, the support tickets, etc. Uh, when it comes to the need of the organization. So sometimes having poor response or sometimes you bought it from a new vendor just because he was giving you promotions and a lot of offers and tomorrow he shut down his office. Okay, or retire the tool saying that, oh, we are no longer maintaining it. We are not giving any kind of updates on this. So you are stuck because your project is ongoing and half of your script is already there in the script, uh, in the tool. So you must evaluate the vendor's strengths, weaknesses, and their support on your tickets before getting the tool. The next one here is using an open source software which may be abandoned, uh, meaning that no further uh, updates are available or its internal competence may require quite frequent updates as a further development. So open source tools, as we all understand, it's a freeware. People don't really have to pay a cost for it. All you need is a GNU license and you can go ahead and use it, which is public open license. And uh, the problem with this, these type of tools is that as they're freeware, they're not charging you anything, so they may suspend at any time, or they may not look, for, look, for, not, not look forward to give you any kind of updates, right? Or sometimes too frequent updates, that means you have to take care of the configuration parallelly, which could be an extra overhead. So that's where we need to keep all these things into account and then mitigate them or have some plan of action for them before blindly opting for it. Also to add here, the automation tool is not compatible with development platforms. Sometimes it may happen that you buy a tool X and you know that you are testing an application based on Java and then X does not support Java. So you are almost done there, right? So you must always do a POC, which is proof of concept to check that the tool which you're looking forward to adopt, does it work with your technology? Does it work with your platform? Or even sometimes the operating systems can be taken into this account. For example, you have a tool which you are working on Windows 10, tomorrow Windows releases Windows 11, and your vendor says, no, no, this tool doesn't work on Windows 11. So your company is going to migrate to 11, but some of your tools are not capable or compatible with that. So all these part basically comes into this point itself. The technology, the language, what you use into your development, uh, whether the tool is capable of testing it, and the base platform where you're going to install it. Right. And last month, but not the least, choosing an unstable tool that did not comply with regulatory requirements or safety standards. So, again, from the software and hardware industry point of view, both the points are mentioned here that even the compliance is equally important. The regulatories, what is recommended, what is not recommended. So your legal team, your security team will be interfering now and then evaluating and asking you what are the policies of this tool? Can we protect it or will this retain our data. So those regulatories and compliances are important. And same goes with the hardware industry or automotive industries where we are very, very restricted to the use of tools, what we can make use of in our projects. So put together, these are all those risks which we should take into account prior to getting a tool, not after that. And if you can plan for mitigation and have some mitigation action handy, that's where you go for it too. Okay, so put together, that's all from this particular tutorial team. And should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.